Karen. Thank you, everybody, for your birthday greetings. Uh, thanks to you and the ranking members, to the staff, and to all the uh, members of our subcommittee, which I'm honored to participate in. I, I would like to, uh, I'm going to start with a very simple statement, which, you know, a as girls and women go, so do their countries. And uh, I think we probably could all agree on, on a bipartisan basis that when girls and women are better educated, when they're healthier, uh, when they're safer, their countries are more secure and more prosperous. So I just want to say this is a great bill for the women of the, of the world. Uh, thank you for that. Because uh, it does things like this. It increases investments to combat gender-based violence, such as sexual violence, child marriage, and female genital mutilation, uh, including restoring funding to the US uh, Population Fund. It invests in girls' education, supports women-owned enterprises, as reaches out to women and girls at risk of violent extremism and conflict. It fully funds the State Department's Office of Global Women Issues. Uh, importantly, it significantly increases investments in family planning and access to contraception. And as uh, some of my colleagues have pointed out, it permanently repeals the dangerous global gag rule that I just, I will say very dip diplomatically, uh, and I hope that uh, it, had, it, it had unintended consequences. I, I hope they meant it to have unintended consequences, but I know we'll be talking about that later. Um, it restores, this bill restores the reproductive rights section in the State Department's annual human rights report. And the bottom line is this bill is about women empowerment, because we know that women, when women succeed, the world succeeds. I am very proud to support this bill, and I yield back.